My guest expert this week is my good friend, Kartik Kumar. How are you, Kartik? I'm good, man. How are you? Not too bad. So for the people that don't know much about Singapore, where you're from and where you live, um, explain a little bit about what NS is. So all Singaporean dudes have to, um, when they gra graduate high school or like that equivalent, like around the time you're 18, uh, have to enlist in the army and uh, serve for two years. And um, yeah, it's basically what it is. So um, how it works is you, like for me, since I went to an American school, I graduated from high school, did two years. So now I'm a freshman in college, but um, I guess that sort of puts me two years behind the people I graduated with. So um, it's, yeah. But that that's pretty much the yeah. <laughs> main overview. So when you went into NS, as far as I know, you could be listed to like a number of things. You could be in the fireman service, you could be a police officer, or you could go into the army, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so w what did you end up doing? And like, what did you guys do usually? So how it works is like the vast majority of people go to the army. And um, a lot of where specifically you're posted has to do with um, your health conditions. And they give you a ranking from A to F based on it. Um, and uh, for me, because I have a torn ACL and they consider ADHD to be a big thing, I was past E. So that meant that like I was excused everything. So I didn't have to like, so I guess my experience at NS is like way different from most people because I didn't actually do any like combat stuff. Like I worked a desk job for two years and my unit specifically was ammunition, but um, but basically PES A, you know, like that's like the best. And then PES F means you don't have to do NS at all. Like you're just unfit to serve. And, um, but like PES F is like pretty extreme. Like you gotta have some, like some real shit for that. Can, can I cuss? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you just have to have something not, not so good. Uh, so yeah, for, for me, um, what I ended up doing was admin work. Uh, it was pretty dull, but it was nice because I just worked office hours. So I would just go to camp in the morning and um, uh, come back home. So I worked from uh, 7.30 to 5.30 um, during the week. And then I had weekends off. On the weekends, were you able to go back into Singapore and see your family and friends? Yeah, or no, I, I went home. I went home every day. Like, oh, really? I, I, st I stayed with my family. Yeah. But um, for most people, how it worked was they would just get the weekends off where they could go see their family. And during the week, they would be staying in camp. That's if you're a combat fit for most units. But uh, for me, yeah, I guess I was lucky in that sense. So what do you think of the NS program as a whole? Because it's a little bit unusual for people, at least in the US, to imagine like a mandatory national service where you go in and you have to go to the military or have to go serve for the country after you're 18. What, do you like the idea? Do you think it works well? Um, I, I don't know. I think like in Singapore, it's, it's hard to like link because, you know, if you look at Singapore from the outside, it just seems like such a great place. But like, I wouldn't necessarily say like NS has the biggest part to play in that, but you know, like you, uh, it's hard to like uh, isolate that factor. But um, I, I think that NS kind of, um, for me at least, like it was, it was a good experience in the sense that like, I didn't like it while I was doing it, but um, afterwards, I, I guess I'm like kind of glad I did it. Like, I, I feel like I would be in a very different place then I, uh, like, had I not done it, um, just in the sense of, you know, like, maturity and that sort of thing, I would have been pretty young going into college anyways, and, um, and uh, you, you, you know, you knew me, I, I feel like that was a disaster waiting to happen, I was <laughs> on my own. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, yeah, I'm happy to hear that it straightened you out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, Tell me a little bit about what it's like to live in Singapore, because you'd be surprised how many people I still meet that either don't know where it is 
or automatically assume it's just some third world hut country. Um, yeah. So tell me what it's like living there. Um, well, it's like a really nice place, you know. I mean, right now it's obviously different because of coronavirus and just the nature of how Singapore is. It's very, very strict. So like right now I'm in quarantine because some guy in my gym got tested positive. That's why I'm in a hotel. But like, it's also, so there's like that where it's like, oh, I have to do quarantine, but it's also what other country would put you in like a four or five star hotel for your quarantine, like nowhere else would do that. So it's kind of like, th there's definitely positives, but there's also definitely negatives, you know, like I, I, I haven't, I guess, like, also because I haven't left Singapore in two years because, you know, in the army, there's, it's, it's hard to find time to travel and you get, like, a specific amount of leave per year. And then, um, obviously, COVID happened, so I haven't been able to. But um, in, in the sense of, like, pre-COVID, Singapore is, uh, is actually, like, a really fun place, you know? Um, they have like a lot of strict laws, but it's also not strict in some in some areas at all. Like, for example, like drinking and clubbing and stuff like that, people start doing that from a really, really young age. And I think that um, what I noticed, like from my friends who went to the American school, but then didn't do their last couple of years in Singapore and ended up going to the US, when they came back to visit, it was like completely um, foreign to them in, in the sense that they had different experiences, you know, and like, uh, not to like generalize this whole thing, but um, I guess in the US probably people would, uh, like kids, I guess, um, don't drink as much and stuff like that. But not even, in, not even to do with that stuff, um, it's pretty safe in the sense that you can go pretty much anywhere and like not have to worry. Like if you like, get super drunk you don't your parents don't have to worry about something terrible happening to you like the worst that'll happen is you'll just wake up somewhere and you'll be completely fine just hung over someone and just sweeping just right home. the sidewalk yeah. Next to you, right? yeah 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 it's it's really interesting and then i think one of the downsides of that is you kind of grow up in a bubble so you're kind of protected from like real real stuff that's out there and um because I, I was born in Singapore and I lived here my whole life. And even within Singapore, I kind of lived in the expat bubble. But, um, you know, there's um, like when I went into NS, um, I like met like actual local people. I never had any local friends, like not even one. And I lived here for 18 years before that. And um, so like I made local friends, but um, it's, it's crazy like how different people lives are people's lives are within Singapore and um yeah it's 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 a it's an interesting place yeah I'll, I definitely can agree with that so when your quarantine experience you were at the gym and then somehow contact tracers or something like that found out that yeah. one guy that uses the same gym got COVID mm -hmm. and then the government yeah. made everybody that was at that gym they sent them into four-star hotels for two weeks, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. So yeah, this is for them to track me. But um, basically what happened was, actually it happened on April 1st. So my friend got the call from MOH, the Ministry of Health. And um, he called me, he was like, dude, uh, so someone at Pure, Pure is the gym that we go to, got um, uh, tested positive. And like, apparently we're all getting quarantined. And I thought he was joking because it was April 1st. So I was like, okay, dude. And then like more people in like the group chat started texting. And I was like, wow, like these guys are really committing to this. But I was not believing it. And fi at finally, like a few hours later, I got the call and I was like, damn it. And then, um, yeah, then how it worked was they came to my house, took me to um, the, to get tested. When and you say they, who do you mean they? Who came to oh, your so house? Oh, so MOH sent, sent a van the the like the people in the vans had like full like they were covered in like plastic and like had the face shield and the mask and like the gloves and everything and then um they came and picked me up took took me to the um to me to the testing center i got tested then they took me to this hotel where i'm staying at now 
And um, the, the, the cra crazy thing is, is that the guy who uh, went to the gym, uh, like I'm mutual friends with him, so I kind of know who he is, um, but he studies in the UK and he was flying out. And what happened was it was actually a false positive. So he got tested again and then he got tested negative. So they let him fly out, like he's already gone, like he left on um, like yesterday or the day before. So like, this is just like kind of give an idea of how strict they are. Like, even though it was a false positive, they still went and quarantined all of us. But yeah, and also they have all these crazy rules in quarantine, like you can't drink. Like I, like I was, I was um, at the, uh, like downstairs we were, I was like checking in kind of like they were just tech checking my ID and stuff and then she was like okay we have like some rules like you can't have any alcohol and then she's like so did you bring any alcohol and my friend had already checked in and he said that they didn't check so I was like no I didn't and then she's like okay and then she's like okay I'm gonna check your bag now and I was like mistakes are made <laughs> so she opens my suitcase but luckily beforehand because I had my laptop and iPad in my bag I decided to wrap the bottles in a towel just to like in case it broke or anything so she didn't see it but it was it, it was it was close yeah and so they they're literally tracking you there to make sure that you mm -hmm. don't leave the room or you leave the hotel or even leave the room uh le you can't leave the room so they bring um, you food service or yeah yeah the food comes to the room and like they'll ring the doorbell and hang the food um, outside and that's the only time you're allowed to open the doors when you're getting your food and they make you download this app and then from the app you're supposed to report your temperature three uh three times a day and i always forget to and every time you forget they video call you to make sure you're still in the hotel room and ask you your temperature wow and all this is paid for by the government right they're paying mm -hmm. for the room they're yeah paying for the food they're paying to keep you there See, that's yeah. like unheard of to people here. Like it's so casual yeah. nowadays. Like I had COVID back in December and when I mm -hmm. got it, I tested positive and I just got a, a call like a few hours later um, from the, the university health and they just said, oh, you tested positive. Make sure you mm -hmm. quarantine for 10 days and then you're okay. That, they see, say, like that's crazy that's to it. me. That's it. I know it, it yeah. is crazy. It should, it, yeah. that should be the crazy, like, like the Singapore strict version, it sounds like a bit overboard for some of it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's working, right? They're containing the virus. Yeah. It's not like it's that yeah. bad over there. Whereas mm -hmm. here, it's obviously not working, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's better that I, I think I'd prefer to have that, the strict hazmat suits show up and throw me in a nice hotel. For a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's really nice, like, I guess, kind of having the benefits of just being safe all the time. But like, you know, this is the first time I'm actually like being on the other side of what goes into making it so safe. So, yeah, I mean, that's just like anything. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal till it's on your doorstep, you know, and you're the one that has to face yeah. it or do it. Yeah. But I mean, at least you don't have to pay for it. right? Yeah. Thank God. Two times but I had to quarantine. I had to pay for a hotel room. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah, because when you're coming into Singapore, they also make you quarantine for two weeks, and um, I think that got to be a bit expensive. So they made it so that you have to pay for if you're coming into Singapore. But the crazy thing about that is they give you a random hotel, so you could actually get like a a terrible hotel, or you could get a nice hotel, and you pay the same amount. I think it's like two thousand Singapore for two weeks. And like, um, I know of people who've gone in like, like, like really bad, like hotels, but then I also know one guy who got like the penthouse suite at the Ritz. It's completely, it's like completely random and you're paying the same, same amount. So you just got to pray when you land. Yeah. And I mean, at the same time, the government is filling these hotels that would otherwise be mm -hmm. empty because of COVID, right? So it's kind yeah, of a win-win because yeah, exactly. the hotel business is getting a big push. Mm -hmm, for sure. So, so they're really, they're pretty lenient in Singapore about alcohol, like you said. Mm. What is it like with drugs or pot? Oh, like that? the opposite, bro. It's like, um, I don't even know what country to compare it to. 
because I've never been anywhere like this in terms of that. Maybe Philippines, <laughs> where they just kill you. But um, here, yeah, it's crazy. The like, obviously, you know, when you fly into Singapore, they have it on the thing. Um, drug traffickers will be killed. So you probably have to be a, an idiot to ignore that. But basically, like you, when you come when you come into Singapore, and you bring drugs, I think it's like over a very small amount. They'll just like, like it's just a death sentence, and it's crazy. And then the they like have like super super strict. I'm pretty sure I I I don't know the laws exactly, but I'm pretty sure if you just deal drugs, that's also the death penalty. If you consume drugs, it's not, but like there's like way bigger consequences. Like it, it, it'd be like you rob someone. It, I, like, I, I, I'm trying to think of a crime that you could commit in the US that will get you the same punishment in Singapore for like smoking a joint. Probably like, yeah, like armed robbery or assault or something. Yeah, yeah. What, and, and also like going back to NS, when you're in the army, there's um, two different types of crimes you can commit, right? There's military crimes and there's like regular civilian crimes. So military crimes would be something like something related to the army. Like, let's say like you, um, like, I guess, uh, like going AWOL, that would be a military crime. And then, um, but like, let's say you get in a fight outside, that would be a civilian crime. But um, if you uh, take drugs and get tested positive while you're in the army, um, I think it's considered both. So when you can take, when you do a military crime, you get sent to military prison. And when you do a civilian crime, you get sent to uh, Changi prison. Neither but, of which are great places. <laughs> no, no. But apparently military prison is a lot worse. Like I, I know a couple of people who have been and um, they, and like, like human rights are just not a thing there, apparently. But uh, w what's crazy is one guy who worked in my office, who's actually like a super nice guy. He was a good friend of mine while I was there. Um, he, but he was one of those guys who like would seem super sketchy and intimidating unless you talk to him and he's like actually a super nice guy. Um, one day we were just like in the office and then um, three uh, dudes, not dressed in military uniform, dressed in like jeans and a t-shirt. Um, or like three or four guys came into the office and they asked for him and, and he was like asleep or something. So, and then they, and then they were, and then I was like, um, oh, because people, people from a different campus supposed to come pick something up that day. So I thought it was them. I was like, oh, I have your stuff. And, and then they were like, uh, oh, we're not here for that. Um, we're from, uh, MP command, which is military police command. And I was like, so scared. And then they said they were here for the other guy. And I was like, like, I didn't even do anything, but I just got intimidated by them being there. And then they made all of us leave the office except for him, and they talked to him. And then they just took him away to go get drug tested. But um, it, he, he ended up, like, passing the drug test. But um, for, for, like, a solid day there, I was like, oh, I'm just never going to see that guy again. And I mean, like, the fact that they just come in and, like, pull him yeah. for a drug test just because, oh, he might seem a little like the type no, uh, to do appa it. apparently apparently they drug tested him and then um while they were waiting for the result they like interrogated him because someone t told someone like there's some rumor that he did drugs or something and um which uh yeah and he basically told me like like later when i saw him about like what they're asking him and he said like yeah apparently someone told him that i did drugs which i don't but um they were yeah just from that they it's take crazy. they take the tip line seriously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what would you say to someone that's thinking about going to see Singapore? Uh, don't bring any drugs. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, uh, don't come now. I don't even think you can come now if you wanted to. But um, probably wait for things to open up a bit, because all the best things in Singapore are closed right now. Like Singapore's nightlife is amazing. And um, it's super, it's super fun. And, and um, honestly, like pretty affordable for like the quality of nightlife there is. 
Um, so yeah, all that stuff's closed right now, but when it opens up, that's definitely something you'd probably want to check out. If you're younger, I guess Universal Studios is, is pretty good. I mean, I don't know how it compares to stuff like that in the US. Um, what else? There's like a lot of shopping, um, uh, like incredible like sites to see. I guess, I guess, I guess like Singapore, if you want to come on like a family trip, you could probably do everything in a week. Um, but if you want to like come and stay for a while, you can like really like get to like actually enjoy the nightlife and stuff like that. But yeah, if, you, and also like the food, the food is so good here. Like the, the street food, they have like good food of all, um, of like all countries, like you can get, and like, there's a like ton of really good restaurants everywhere. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'd say. What is Fendom? Why is it uh, gaining popularity lately? So pretty much Fendom is um, financial domination. And being a Fendom is being a financial dominatrix. As everyone knows, like you can f dominate people in many different kinds of ways. Um, but this way is specifically financially. 